everyone's plugged into this ecosystem of constant interruptions. We're in a, an environment which is all about information flows and knowledge flows. We know one thing for certain is it's not going to change back. I really do think it's an art and a science. The world around us is changing faster than ever before, especially with the use of digital technologies. And so we need to keep abreast of current trends that are happening and look at them critically and think, how could I use that in our context? Is that going to benefit for our kids and how will it benefit our children? Actually grappling with understanding how to find the right stuff, how to critically reflect on it, how to build a um, build new knowledge, how to develop a point of view is more challenging. You might have a problem-based learning experience going on or a project-based learning situation and the student brings just as much as the teacher does or the librarian does. It's no longer one person holds all the information. I think that's really exciting. It makes everything so much richer. Increasingly we've We've, we're integrating more of that technology, more of that mindset, more of those digital behaviors. So students can be interacting in a number of different ways, creating a tutorial on YouTube, uh, building a, a structure in Minecraft for math class, uh, a variety of different activities. But they're moving between screens, they're moving between technologies, devices more than ever before. And it's our job to help guide them in that respect, but also really capture their enthusiasm and that expertise so that they move from being digitally capable to digitally literate. There is certainly the impression that children are very digitally capable, but I see that as a different thing to being digitally literate, where they're aware of what they're doing and a purpose behind it. So that they're critical of what they're using those devices for and that they're actually optimizing their potential for their learning. How often are we actually modeling how to find content and on a regular basis. We scaffold our kids for, for everything that we do, so why aren't we doing it with trying to find information online? There are things we can do now that we simply were unable in the past, and digital technology has made that possible. It's not about we give them one-to-one -one devices and that's all they do, it's best tool for the job at the right time. They're big steps for a lot of the teachers, but once they grasp it and see what they can do as a tool and how collaborative and how it's a feedback tool as well, they um, really take it on board and, and try new things with it. Over time you're given um, the skills and the support and the kind of relationship support to see the whole picture and to develop skills and confidence along the way so that it's not just jumping into I know how to use this thing but actually I'm getting a much richer, more supported experience. The class has got together and over a week made collaborative notes in groups. So one group has done women's suffrage and one group has done male integration into New Zealand society and things like that. And then they've made those study resources and then shared them with the whole class. And so that everyone's got these amazing study notes that they can learn for from the exams. And when we did that with one secondary teacher, history teacher, she said their grades jumped up. They jumped up from the previous exam and she truly believed it's because they were engaged with the material and they knew it was going to be used by someone else. So the students had to lift their game because their peers were going to be really critical about the study notes they had made about that topic. So that to me is where the students are taking charge of that learning. That teacher didn't make four sets of study notes, the class made them. The thing that I'm particularly passionate about is actually seeing students be able to be agents of their learning and be able to be um, able to share that, to be able to curate their own content. It's that sort of thing, that working smarter together as student and as teacher, I think that's the exciting thing. We're actually really trying to, to access the databases that have been curated by researchers, by educators, Britannica, Opposing Viewpoints, for example. A lot of the uh, databases offered through EPIC, so reminding teachers and educators that there's that side street of excellent resource that can be used that's not necessarily on the main track. They can ask the questions and seek the answers, and they don't just seek them and copy and paste them from a website. They have the ability to critique and um, consciously curate the, the information that they are consuming, but also produce and create um, or recreate information. For young people, what libraries provide, I think, is a very physical and virtual environment where that dynamic knowledge landscape can be made very visible. And I think that's important because people dive into this tool or that tool 
and where you can actually get a sense of the whole, I think it helps kids to make sense of that very complex world. It's about the joy of curiosity, the passion for learning, for the world around you, the offering of options, the respecting of opinions. <laughs>